Hello everyone, this is Felix from GM Wolf. Today we are looking at marching squares. So what are the marching squares? Well, it is an algorithm that allows you to create contour lines around uh, a grid data. What I mean by that is if you have um, like this, there's a series of points, points and each point, uh, the term uh, has, holds the value uh, to whether it is inside or outside the object you can use, then use that grid data in order to um, well, recreate the object around it. Now you may ask why is this useful and I, actually uh, I find it really useful for terrains for example. You may want to randomly create some terrain and then be able to assign the correct tile to it and um, using this uh, point system instead of a cell system uh, I find gives much nicer looking results. Uh, so let's have a look at how it works. Um, it's actually really quite simple uh, you have 15 different cases um, because there's well four different points and each can be true or false and um, you basically check what case it is and you draw your sprites accordingly um, so as you can see uh, there are a few uh, ambiguous uh, points like this one over here number five um, where um, you're not sure whether you should join the two points or have them cut off but um, Overall, if the resolution is high enough, you, you won't be able to spot these. Um, on top of that, it's also a very nice algorithm because you can do it uh, for all the different um, um, like grid points individually. You don't need to know uh, data around it that you already calculated, which means you could theoretically do all of them at the same time. Of course, on a computer that doesn't really matter, but it does make coding it a lot, lot, lot more easy. So now let's have a look at uh, how we determine which case it is. And that, again, is really quite simple. Uh, we, we give a value to each of our different points. Uh, as you can see, they all hold a, a power of 2, meaning that we could total them um, up. So for example, if we have uh, the top left corner and the bottom right corner, uh, you add them together to so get 8 plus 2, and that gives you 10. So you should use the 10th case. Um, this, uh, using those numbers, means that we'll never have uh, duplicate um, values, which is really, really quite nice, and also makes the algorithm really quite easy. So without further ado, let's have a look at how we can uh, well, start coding this within Game Maker. So what I have here is a, a really simple project, and if I press play, uh, you'll always see what uh, I did in this one. And uh, all of this is, um, well, a random grid, and I'm drawing circles. Uh, to uh, display what the value is for each circle. So if the circle is black, uh, full, it means uh, it is inside the shape. And if the value is uh, not inside the shape, then I, I draw uh, an empty circle. Uh, I'll just show you how I did this. It is really, really quite simple. Again, uh, inside uh, just one object, I have a uh, piece of code in the create event uh, where I create my grid. I made it uh, just a size of 20 by 20 for now. And uh, then I loop through each of the uh, points using two for loops. And uh, I just set a random value, either 1 or 0, using iRandom1 over here. Um, if you don't understand uh, the code I've written here, I suggest you either go look at uh, DS grids, what they are, or that you look up for loops. And uh, before, before you start watching the rest of the video, make sure you do understand this. Uh, because it, even though it's not essential to the... Uh, algorithm itself, um, you should really be, you should really know what these are before you start attempting more complicated algorithms. Um, next, in the drawer event, uh, same thing, I loop for each of the different grid cells, well, grid points I should say, because we're not actually working with cells at this point. And um, if it's, if, if uh, it is inside the shape, if this, if the value is true at that point, I will be drawing um, a circle that is full, and uh, I always draw the circle which isn't full, so it just draws it on top of it. Um, maybe not the most efficient implementation, but it definitely works just fine. So now let's have a look at how we can actually uh, start implementing uh, the margin squared algorithm. The first thing we need to do is uh, create the sprite. So I'm just going to create a new sprite, and uh, here I'm using a, a size of 64 by 64. Now I should note that right now I'm using loads and loads of arbitrary numbers, and that is not the best thing. However, for the purpose purposes of this video, I wanted to go much quicker, so I'm not going to go through the process of creating 
uh, all different variables. But if you are working on more serious projects and you're not just following this tutorial along, but you're actually working on your project, you should definitely make sure that you have uh, the proper variables for each um, for each individual um, well values. So I'm going to press OK here, and I want 15 different images. So I'm going to set the length to well. Actually, we have a total of 16 cases uh, because the first case is case number zero. So here you go, 16 different images. Uh, by the way, if you didn't catch that, I pressed animation, set length, and I set it to 16. So what I'm going to do now is open up uh, the first image. And before I start drawing anything, I'm going to uh, quickly go into view, grid settings. I'm going to set the size to 16 by 16. Actually, uh, yeah, 16 by 16 will work fine. I'm going to click Use Exclusive or it will make it a lot clearer. Now I press this button over here to bring the grid spell. And I'm just going to make this bigger so you can see. And so the first case is uh, just, you know, nothing there. So I'm just going to leave it blank. And I'm going to press this button over here, uh, up here. Alternatively, you can also press Shift and, the, and, and uh, Full Stop. And that will also go to the next image. And now I'll start uh, drawing case one. So I'm actually going to switch to a thicker line, like so. And the first case is simply joining up this uh, center point to this center point over here. And um, the next case is the bottom, uh, the, bo the se bottom center point to the right center point. Uh, the case, at the ca next case after that is simply um, uh, left to right. After that, we have uh, top and right. Now, it is uh, noteworthy that I'm doing this quite quickly, uh, not paying much attention to uh, how neat my lines are, if they're really at the center, etc. But if you want it to look good on a, on a proper project, I do advise that you pay more attention than I am um, in order to make sure that you're doing this correctly. So, yes, that was case number five, so image number four. Now for case number six on image five, um, we actually have two lines to draw. The first one connecting the these two center points over here, and the next one connecting these two center points, like so. Uh, yes, that's correct. Next one is top and bottom for image number seven. Well, number image six, case number seven. Um, the case after that is um, joining these two lines again. The case after that is actually the same line. The only difference is that this one here before um, image number case number eight is uh, with the shape in here, and uh, this case here, case number nine, image eight has the shape inside here. Uh, the next one is another one vertical line. This time with the shape on the left side. Um, the case after that is these two center points here and here. Next, we have just this simple line here. After that, we have a center point, uh, a middle line again. Next, we have um, a line like so. After that, we have left and bottom. And finally, we have the whole shape. Now, just to make it clearer, um, I think it is worthwhile uh, going back through the images and uh, shading in the regions which are inside the shape, uh, just to make it clearer in your mind. This way, if you actually uh, if you actually do want to have uh, uh, the color inside the shape, you can do the step. If you do not want to have any colors inside the shape, just skip that step. Um, I'm just going to put it in just uh, for completeness sake. So uh, on this image, you have to shade uh, the bottom left corner over here. Here, this is the bottom right corner. Here, we want the bottom half. Here, the top right corner. Uh, we want to shade the inside bit over here. Here, we want to shape, shade, uh, shade the right bit. Here, we want to shade uh, the right bit as well. And here, this is a, a, a like almost duplicate. The only difference is like on this one. So. Uh, on image number eight, we want to draw this one here. Here we want to um, fill in this side. Over here, once again, we want to fill in the center. Here we want to fill in the biggest part. Over here, the top part. Over here, uh, this part here. 
This one here needs this part uh, shaded. And finally, you want to shade everything. Now, just quickly, I'm going to uh, put this up so you can see uh, what it should look like. Let's make this a nice 4x4. Four four. So just make sure that uh, all your cases look like that. Um, this is what it's supposed to look like. So just make sure, I'm just going to leave this up. You can pause the video, make sure you have everything right. Uh, it's quite important that you do because uh, if you don't, it obviously won't work well. You may get uh, you know, one tile that is slightly misplaced. Now let's press OK and call this SPR underscore, uh, let's call it squares. And do not center it. That's very important. We're working with, uh, you should not center them. I mean, you could center them, but then you would have to offset it later on, which makes no sense. So I'm just going to leave it uncentered. Now let's go back inside our main. And now what we want to do is draw our sprites. So we're going to have draw sprites. And I'm going to triple dash this in front. So what this does, by the way, let's triple dash and then uh, a message means that uh, in here in your object you can uh, you can identify different pieces of code. Uh, I strongly recommend you do that. When you end up with multiple pieces of code, it just makes it faster to work with. So here, what we're going to do is once again loop through our grid. So I'm going to use a for loop for var i is equal to zero. I is more than twenty because we're using a twenty by twenty grid. I plus plus. And uh, once again, the same thing, but with j. j is more than 20, j++. plus plus. So this is just your standard uh, nested for loop in order to loop through your whole grid. Now what we're going to do is determine whether um, we have a... Um, uh, which, which image index we're supposed to use. And uh, so what I'm going to do is... Um, well, we need to determine our first four different. Um, I mean, if I bring up my PowerPoint back up, uh, we need our four different points, like so. So, um, um, all we need to do is go P1 is equal to TS grid get. TS grid underscore get. We want uh, the ID of the grid I chose was, which is grid. And then I come J. P2. I'm just going to copy this for P2, P3, and P4. So P2 um, is, uh, as you see here, the one next to it over here. Uh, we're actually going in circles. If you if you see the arrows, um, we're going uh, top left, top right, bottom right, bottom left, like so. This is the order that I chose to go with, and that many other uh, implementations of the algorithm choose, chooses to go with. So P2 should be at at uh, point i plus 1 and j. p3 will be i plus 1 and j plus 1. And p4 will be simply i uh, and j plus 1. So we have a four points. I'm just going to write var in front of them. What this means is that the data is only available uh, in this particular piece of code, which is uh, more memory efficient. Uh, whenever you only need it for a, a short amount of time, always put var in front. Uh, it's what I'm doing here also. It just makes it more efficient. Uh, on a small scale project like me just demonstrating, um, it's not really necessary, but it is good practice. And I do recommend that you start using that uh, as soon as possible. Um, so now that we have a four points, we need to figure out which index it is. So if I bring back up my PowerPoint back up uh, over here, uh, we have the first point being multiplied by eight, the second point being multiplied by four, the third point being multiplied by 2, and the fourth point not being multiplied by anything, uh, which makes it really quite easy because I can go var n, or index maybe, is equal to, to the first point multiplied by 8. So p1 times 8, and I'm just going to put brackets to make it clear what we're going on about. We want to add p2 times 4, add p3 times 2, and finally, add p4. We're multiplying it by 1, so we don't really need to uh, write times 1, because uh, that doesn't make much sense. However, we do have a slight issue right now, and it is that over here, as you can see, we have i plus 1 and j plus 1. However, our j and i is going all the way up to uh, 19, uh, which means that when you add 1, you get 20. However, our grid only goes up to 19. I mean, it's a 20 by 20 grid, but because uh, 0 counts as a number, 
it really only goes up to 19, which means that right now we'll actually go out of bounds of our grid. So all we're going to do here is change our 20 to 19s. And that is because, uh, well, simply because of these plus ones over here, we're actually taking care of the last uh, lines on the, on the right and on the bottom, um, which uh, is really easily fixed. Uh, just do minus one over here. Um, so now that we have our index, all that's left to do is actually draw a sprite. So I'm going to do draw underscore sprite. Uh, so our sprite was spr underscore square. Uh, sub image is index, which we just calculated. And then x and y. So I'm just going to do i times 64, j times 64. Now, again, I am using magic numbers. Uh, by that, I mean I'm using... Uh, you know, 64 and 64, over here I'm using 20 and 19, and you should really not be doing that. In your project, you should be adding um, uh, proper variables. I'm just doing this for convenience sake. And now if I press play, what we should see is our, well, if I didn't do any mistakes, is, yeah, here you go. We have our uh, dots being nicely uh, um, represented by our new match and squares algorithm. And if I uh, close this really quickly, and um, put our circles on this side, so that our circles are drawn after our sprites, we should be able to see that it is, in fact, uh, the correct sprites being put in the correct uh, point. Now, this didn't work for some reason. Uh, draw circles is after that, so I don't know why this isn't... Huh, that's very strange. Maybe if I press OK and then save it? Uh, yeah, I'm not quite sure what is going on. Um, normally, the, the dots should be drawn on top of... Ah, here you go. Here it works. Our dots are being drawn on top of our of our sprites, which means that you can see that indeed all of the dots are inside the shape, and all of the circles are outside the shape. And uh, you can do this on a much smaller scale, uh, and it will look a lot nicer. In fact, uh, you can also use uh, just a tile set. I made one from a I modified one I found online, uh, which meant I. Uh, I could create some very nice looking effects. So if I just do create from strip, I think I have it on my desktop quickly. Here it is. Uh, I think these are 40 by 40, and I have 16 different ones. There you go. Create it. And now if I simply stretch it to the 64 by 64, just so I don't have to change my code. Oops. So as you can see, I, I just modified it so these tiles would obey um, uh, the original uh, squares, as you can see, uh, they, they, they match up. And now if I press play, uh, you should be able to see that you get some very nice looking results. In my opinion, using this marching squares algorithm looks much better than other tile techniques. And uh, I obviously forgot to change my sprite over here. Um, but yes, I find it to look much, much better. Simply because, uh, well, first of all, you have, uh, well, not only, really, well, yeah. You have less cases, which means that first of all, there's less uh, error. Second of all, it does give much more organic shapes because you get those nice diagonals, which you won't get with uh, traditional tile sets. Uh, so I really quite like that. Um, so yes, as you can see, it looks great in my opinion. Uh, obviously, I didn't use the most efficient implementation for drawing. However, the calculation is, well, it doesn't get more efficient than that, really, unless you go into byte-wise shifting. But, uh, I'm not sure how this works in, uh, in Game Maker, uh, if this is faster or not, uh, using the runner at least. I know that it's much faster when you start using YYC, but uh, by the way, shifting is much faster. However, this is it for this video. Thanks for watching, guys. I hope you enjoyed it and that you did find it useful. Uh, and hopefully, we'll see some more products out there using it for style sets and stuff like that. Uh, I've been Felix from GMO. I'll see you guys next time.